Good morning and happy Vlogmas day 10. So today Yaniv and I are off to do some errands. We have to go to Dollarama to pick up some tape and then the grocery store to get anything that we missed on Instacart. So we're off to Nestor's Market again. We love Nestor's Market. Today we are going to be cooking my crispy chicken and this is sort of my rendition of like a breaded chicken but like a little bit healthier and like DIY homemade because I have eczema I like to really control as much as I can the food that I put in my body so I can avoid any reactions we're going to try and eat a little bit more wholesome at home and usually how I make this chicken crusted chicken is with cornflake crumbs and I just pour this into a bowl and then I mix any of the seasonings or salt that I want to add to this to give it a little bit more flavor. I like to do my chicken with chicken thighs and this is a pretty hefty pack. So I'm probably only gonna do half of them breaded and the other half I'm just gonna bake so we can add it to um, a little butter chicken that we're gonna make for dinner. But I will start prepping this now for lunch so that we can eat some breaded chicken and vegetables and maybe a little bit of rice too. Here I just take my cornflakes and then usually I'll put like maybe an Italian seasoning or if you want something spicier, you could put like chili flakes or something to give it a little bit more of a kick. But I usually like to keep it pretty plain and simple because it just crisps up in the oven so nicely and they become so delicious without like frying them or um, sauteing them or anything like that with oil. This is like completely oil free. So I line a tray and I also preheat my oven to 350 degrees and then I open my chicken and get to coating. Here I have the chicken and I usually just open it up a little bit and I put it in the pot and I like to coat all sections of the chicken to make sure that it is thoroughly covered. They're even the little pieces that end up falling off and I usually just put them to the side and I get in all the little crevices and look at how well this stuff sticks. And then I just take it like that and I just place it on the baking sheet. So as you can see, it's already getting so crispy and usually at the 20 minute mark, I'll go in and I'll cover up any of the spots that seem to have like um, missing coating and then I will flip them and recoat the underside so they really get crispy on all sides of the chicken. I just made myself a, another matcha latte. This is the vanilla one from David's Tea. So good. And I feel like I am a huge, huge snacker whenever I cook so I assembled my um, vegan feta cheese with my jam and have my Melba toast here and I just love to snack. I'm a snacker. This is gonna take like probably another half an hour to finish. So I like to have a little something in my stomach when I'm cooking so I feel good and happy while I'm cooking and not hungry. So I'm gonna snack on this and I'll check back in when it's time to flip and recoat the chicken. I'm just gonna coat some of this area again, anywhere that looks like a little bit wet or that it needs a little bit more. So see, you can see that some of them become a little bit missing. So I just pile it on in those areas. Okay, we're gonna put it back in the oven for another 20 minutes so it gets nice and crispy. Here is the finished meal. We have some rice, our veggie medley, and look at this crispy, crispy chicken. So, so well done. Wow. So I thought it'd be fun in this segment to finally learn how to Dutch braid my hair. And if you're not sure what Dutch braiding is, you probably saw it in the thumbnail. And I'll also insert a picture here. I just love 
the way that it looks. I've always loved the way that my hair looks braided. My mom used to do my hair every single morning of elementary school and I like followed that up by doing it in high school and I've really gotten lazy to be honest and I never really upped my skills as far as like braiding and more complex hairstyles go. So it's been on my bucket list or like goal list of things to learn for quite some time now. I told myself, I was like, Erica, during this state of isolation and lockdown, you need to learn this skill. I was too sad. I never got around to it. There were just too many other things focusing my mind that I wasn't ready to learn a skill. However, today we have this 12 minute and 30 second video from this is everyday hair inspiration. I'll link her video down below and like whatever other videos I use for references to learn. But this is the video that we're going with. It has 13 million views. So I think she did something right in this video and it was, it looks like it's very clear. I haven't watched it yet. Here we are. My hair is medium to long, I would say. And I have my headphones in or earphones in just so you guys aren't like bombarded by the sound on my laptop plus my sound of me talking and I have a mirror off to this side so if you find me looking down there you know why also I'm very sorry for the lighting I don't know what's going on here I tried to light it up and this is as bright as this room gets it is only 3 30 here in Vancouver and this is what I'm dealing with do you see outside it is literally almost dark outside she starts off with already parted hair and I'm just gonna go for it right in the middle Ooh, isn't that a look? So my back part has been approved by Yaniv. I'm going to comb this section out. He was impressed, so that means I did a really good job. I'll show you guys like in the after pictures when I take those. <sighs> so let's start this video and see what the first step is. First step, and I'm already really nervous. She told me to take a triangle section at the front that is that's not a triangle let's why is this so hard haha -ha. we did it you can see my baby hairs are wild and she says to go back and to split it up into three sections one two three haha -ha. okay and then this I need to bring it uh, uh, under and into the <laughs> My arms are so tired. Oh my god. Okay. Shoot. She makes it look so easy. So I think my problem is just um the strands getting all confuzzled. So I have the three here. Now you go under and then you do this piece under. Okay, so now I have my three pieces like she showed me. I'm gonna hold these two and I'm gonna go in with this piece that needs to grab some hair from here. See, and this is the part that stresses me out because all of the pieces get really muddy, like, Okay. What? I am genuinely trying here and I am genuinely struggling. I feel like there are definitely easier braids I could have started with, but this is the only style of braid that I really like, the Dutch braid. So we are going to... <sighs> We're gonna go hard. <laughs> the amount of brain power that this is taking right now is not healthy. <laughs> So far we have this side done. There is a piece of hair that's stuck out of the braid and it's not the prettiest, but it is, it is a braid. It's a Dutch braid at the end of the day. We, we did that. Now I'm going to try and attempt the other side. I feel like the key to a Dutch braid is really just powering through it. You just have to keep going and trust in the process because you'll get somewhere. And this is the first time that I've actually like committed to it. And it's not too bad. Definitely, I feel like I could go somewhere with this. Shh. 
So I am literally sweating. I am radiating heat. I had to call my brother's girlfriend, Mara, and I'm like, Mara, God help me, I can't do this. And she's like, you gotta go, you gotta do it. You gotta power through it. And she like helped me power through it. And honestly, I think with a Dutch braid, it's just about perseverance. And this is like my first time doing it on both sides. And obviously it's a little, it's a little bit of a shady job, but I got it like the general shape is there like I can like pull it out and the general French braid-esque-ness of it is there and I am so freaking proud of myself and I feel like it's just gonna take practice my hands are literally shaking because I am so exhausted and I'm so ready to just call it a night and as you can see it's this Hello. whole experience took me one hour and a good pep talk from Mara but other than that She's good. She's a braid. I found that she literally just updated about a week ago her whole video technique that actually helps you with the finger placement, which is what I feel like I had the most trouble with. So thumbs up this video if you want to see me try again. And I will do it with this updated video to see if her re-explaining the finger placement and hand placement really helps. And I'll give you the full in-depth behind the scenes of me learning how to Dutch braid again. And that is it for this video. I hope you're having a great day wherever you are in the world and that this video brightened up your day a little bit and gave you a good laugh honestly perseverance is key and i'll see you tomorrow for vlogmas day 11